Here's how to fine tune the Llama 7B model directly from your laptop. Hi, I'm Carter. I'm a founding engineer at Brev.dev and today I'll be using our platform to do exactly that. So if you follow the link below, it'll take you directly to this notebook where we can fine tune Llama 3 using a method called Direct Preference Optimization or DPO. Uh, before you actually follow along and click the deploy now, you'll have to create an account. And I also suggest that you go to Hugging Face and make sure that you have access to the Metas Llama 3 8B Instruct model. You'll have to request access. They'll give it to you, but you should do this before beginning the tutorial. Otherwise, you'll have to wait and you don't want your GPU running while you're actually trying to fine tune. So uh, this is just the new, very popular Meta Llama 3 model. And this is the 8 billion parameter version. And we'll actually be using the instruct version of the model for that. But once you're actually ready, all you have to do is click deploy now. And we're actually going behind the scenes now and finding you a powerful enough GPU so that you can begin the fine tuning process on that very powerful NVIDIA GPU. In this case, we're using just an A100. Um, and right now we're going into our many cloud providers and finding that GPU for you. So I say you can do this all from your laptop because Brev.dev will actually source the GPU for you, install all the relevant software, and then this notebook, which we'll be walking through, will, you'll be able to access it directly on the powerful A100 NVIDIA GPU. So a little bit about this tutorial is, this is a notebook where we explain a little bit about what DPO is, and then we'll actually be fine tuning Llama 3 on it. Uh, if you are not familiar, uh, there are a number of different ways to fine tune. Uh, SFT is supervised fine tuning, which essentially just means you have input and output pairs and you can train a model to kind of have more functionality that you want. Uh, the problem with supervised fine tuning is that there's no kind of feedback mechanism for it. It doesn't actually know whether it's improving the model at all. It's just going directly based on those input output pairs. So then there's another one, uh, another method that improves upon this called RLHF or reinforcement learning uh, from human feedback. This is a great way to fine tune as well. The problem is that you require a reward model. So you have this whole other model that has to be trained so that it knows whether it's actually improving and getting closer to the, you know, functionality that you want. But um, there's a new method called DPO, which is, uh, as I mentioned, it's direct pre preference optimization, which instead actually has pairs of chosen and rejected answers based on a given prompt. So what we'll be doing is using a data set with these uh, DPO chosen and rejected answers. And we'll look at what those look like once we actually get into the notebook. As you can see, we're still installing the software right now on this uh, instance, and then we'll be able to begin the fine tuning process. In total, this should take you about an hour and uh, A100s are not super expensive. So this is probably only a couple dollars to run through this fine tuning process. And, uh, if you have any questions on the tutorial, please join our Discord channel or ask us on X. We want to improve these tutorials. This is one of our many libraries of notebooks. Uh, we have a library of notebooks where you can try out a ton of different fine tunings with guides. And this is a way that we find a lot of our people. So if you're enjoying the tutorial, make sure to like, subscribe, etc. cetera. Uh, in the meantime, I'm just gonna wait for the software to finish installing and then we'll get into the notebook. Alrighty, as you can see, we've installed all the software on the instance, and then we're ready to access the notebook. So all I have to do is click Access Notebook, and it'll actually take me to the same notebook we were just viewing on the other page, but this time it's actually running on the powerful A100 GPU. So as you can see, the same notebook is here, and we're just gonna be walking through the cells. Uh, I'm not gonna go too much into detail of reading every single word here. I encourage you to read that yourself, um, and I additionally encourage you to follow along with me. Uh, but essentially, DPO improves on RLHF, or reinforcement learning with human feedback, because you don't need that separate reward model. Additionally, RLHF is very computationally expensive, and oftentimes it's relatively unstable. DPO improves upon this because it essentially treats the fine-tuning as a classification problem, because we have, again, the chosen and rejected answers uh, that we want the model to be more like. We would want the probability of choosing the chosen answer to be higher than the probability of choosing the rejected answer. If you are familiar with Jupyter Notebooks, then you know exactly what this looks like. We're gonna just start running these cells. You can click Shift-Enter to just run the cell, 
and this little star means that the cell is running. And uh, once that turns into a number, we know that we are ready to move on to the next cell. Uh, we have to install some relevant software, but this actually is only the relevant software for this notebook. We actually pre-install as brev.dev things like Python, CUDA, and everything, so that you don't have to worry about any of that software setup. Alrighty, as you can see, the cell has turned into a number, which means we're ready to move on to the next cell. In this cell, we just installed a bunch of relevant software libraries that we'll be using as part of this guide. Uh, the next cell is to actually log into Hugging Face. So as you can see, this is actually what determines whether you have access to the model itself so that we can pull this model and then begin fine tuning it. So uh, make sure that you put your token in here. I'm gonna do that right now. The next cell is just setting up the relevant software that we need, uh, things like LoRa. We'll be using LoRa as part of this guide. LoRa stands for Low Rank Adaptation, which means that we actually only have to fine tune a couple, like 12% or so of the parameters of the total model. These are the parameters that really kind of determine the main functionality of the model. If you were to fine tune every single model or every single parameter, as in the 8 billion parameters, the 7B in Llama 7B stands for 8 billion. Uh, or Llama 3 8B stands for 8 billion. And so we don't want to fine tune all 8 billion of that. That would take far too long. And you can actually get really good you know, fine tuning with just the low rank adaptation of only fine tuning about 12% of those. Uh, this is where we decide, okay, we actually want the instruct model. We have our bits and byte config. We're going to quantize the model so that we, again, can fit this on an A100 GPU. Uh, all that all quantization means is that you're reducing the number of floating point variable or floating points on each of the weights. So maybe instead of being like 16 decimals, it's only four or eight. That's what quantizing means. This is uh, where we're specifying the reference model. So what's important for DPO is that it actually compares the reference model against the the trained model, so that we can see hey, are we actually improving the probability of getting our chosen answers and reducing the probability of getting our rejected answers when compared to the reference model? That's what DPO means. And uh, that way we can actually just compare the two and that's how we can get the feedback loop of it, are we actually improving the functionality towards what we actually want and is the loss or are we getting more accurate? Is the loss going down? And uh, that's why DPO is incredibly powerful. And you don't actually have to specify the reference model, but we do that more for um, just making it really clear what we're doing as part of this guide. Uh, I think that this guide would be great to do as like a school project, um, or if you're interested in just getting your hands wet with fine tuning, Llama 3, this is a great way to do it. Uh, there are many different sort of reasons why you would want to fine tune Llama 7B. It could be a business use case. In this particular guide, what we're doing is we're going to be fine tuning the instruct model to essentially get richer information out of the answer. Uh, so for you'll see when we look at like the chosen and rejected answers, sometimes the uh, model can be very verbose. And so if you ask it for a question, it might be like, sure, I would be happy to help the first step, blah, blah, blah. And if we just want like bullet points, like kind of really just get to the meat of the answer of what we want, that's what we'll be doing as part of this guide. We're setting our LoRa config here. Then we're going to form load and uh, format the data set. The DPO data set we'll be using is from Intel. It's called the Orca DPO pairs. And uh, we're only going to be using 150 samples to actually do this. Uh, this seed will make it so that you can replicate the exact set of samples that I have in this guide. But feel free to change that depending on what you want to do. Um, so you can see these are the, the data set that we have here. And now we can actually start looking at some of the, the DPO data set and see what it looks like, right? So here was the question. This is essentially the prompt. And then we can see the rejected and the chosen answers. So the rejected answer and then the chosen answer looks something like this. Now you'll see that they're fairly similar, but the chosen answer is a bit richer in information. It's a bit more semantically, uh, not necessarily concise, but it has a richer answer. But if I just put a random number here, let's do 37, we can start seeing what the type of pairs look like. So here we go. Create a set of triples that describe the content of the following sentence. The, near the Portland Arms in the Riverside area is the coffee, Cotto Coffee Shop, blah, blah, blah. And let's look at the rejected answer. Sure, here is a set of triples that describes the content in the given sentence, right? And then the chosen answer, to create a set of triples, you see how it got rid of like, sure, here is a set of triples. It's not as conversational. It's a bit more 
just the information that we actually want. Let's grab one more case just to really set this home of what this is actually doing. And so when we actually perform the fine tuning, what we wanna do, that's a bit too long, let's do a different one. We wanna increase the probability of getting closer to the chosen answer and decrease the probability of, ooh, this one's in German. So here are some facts, and then based on the bullet points, write a short biography describing the life of Jane Cavendish. Sure, here's a short biography. Now the next one, the chosen answer, is it got rid of that. You see that? Here's a short biography. So again, it's just giving us the answers. What this does is it's actually just a formatter for the data set to get it prepared for what we expect from Llama 3. And then we're going to actually format the data set how we want. Change the original columns and map them towards the actual data set that we want, uh, specifying stuff like the end of token or the end token. And now when we look at the data set, you'll see that there's a different formatting so that we that Llama 3 is expecting the exact format that we have. And now what we're actually going to do is log into weights and biases. Weights and biases is a very industry standard way to uh, essentially view the your actual training run and understand stuff like how was your GPU utilization? Is your loss actually going down, et cetera? So I'm gonna go through and just get my API key. Now we're actually ready to begin the fine tuning process. Uh, so these are the training arguments. All I did was change the number of max steps to 20 from 200 and the number of warm up steps from 100 to five. This is just to make it run a lot quicker. Um, for this particular demo, which means we won't actually get probably all the way to the functionality we would like. The loss will still be somewhat high compared to if you were to do something like the default, which is the 200 steps with the 100 warm up. Warm up steps are just a way where the learning rate's a little bit higher at the beginning. So it might be a little spiky to try and get closer, quicker to what we actually want. And then it'll sort of flatten out a little bit. Um, we're setting the DPO trainer here and uh, just ran NVIDIA SMI. We see that we have 15 gigs of the 40 gigs used up before we actually begin training. And then all we have to do is actually run this cell, which begins training. And so what this is gonna do is it's gonna start using backprop, just standard fine tuning, uh, and it's going to try and get us closer to the probability, or it's when compared to the reference model, we want our new model to have a higher chance of choosing the chosen answer and a lower chance of choosing the rejected answer. So this is an example run of the one that's actually 200 steps. And as you can see, the Rejected is in the red here, and the chosen is in the blue. And so the they've started to diverge. The probability of us getting the rejected answer is much lower than the probability of us getting the chosen answer. And so as you can see, we're now beginning our training. The loss starts off fairly high, and we should see that go down and get actually decently low by step 20. But again, if you wanted to do like a, a more robust, uh, fuller fine tune, then I would do it for more steps than just 20. I'm gonna wait a second and we'll let this finish up. It looks like it expects it to take around four minutes, um, which means if you do 200 steps, it will take probably around an hour, um, but I will get back to you once we're done fine tuning. Alrighty, the train is actually now finished. As you can see, we went from a training loss of 0.69 all the way down to like 0.06. Now we can go actually analyze this run on hugging face, or on weights and biases, excuse me. And we can see, for example, wow, the chosen is now in red and the rejected is in blue. But as you can see, we got a higher probability of choosing the chosen answer and a lower probability of choosing the rejected answer by step 20. This is exactly what we wanted. This means that now after training it, when compared to the reference model, we are more likely to get functionality that is closer to our chosen answer that we wanted. Now we can actually go through and begin testing this model. Uh, as you can see, it looks somewhat similar to that. If we had 200 steps, it'd be closer. We're just gonna save the final checkpoint here. I'm just running the cells by hitting shift enter, by the way. We're gonna reload the base model. And then we're gonna, from pre-trained, get the instruct model. We're going to merge the base model with the adapter. This is what Laura really does, is it'll replace the weights that we trained in our new model with the weights that we, uh, with the original weights in the base model. That way we essentially have our new model, which you can see on the left here is that Brev DPO Llama 38B. Yes, 38B. 
and then we're going to save the the new model there we go we're going to create a pipeline to actually run inference and now we can test our new model so here's where we're going to have the prompt and then the question that we want for to ask the model. So the default one we have here is just like, what are GPUs and why would I use them for machine learning tasks? Let's see what it comes up with. So there we go. Now we get our response and you can see it right here. It says GPUs are specialized to design massive parallel processing, which makes them efficient for certain tasks, including machine learning. And it gives us the response here. And so this response is trained on the DPO or using the DPO data set that we had to give it a more specific kind of concise answer. So it might've said before, like, sure, I would love to help. If you recall some of the chosen and rejected answers, the rejected answers were a little bit more verbose. Uh, we can do another one here. Like, I want to start a coding YouTube channel. What are the steps I should take? And let's see what it gives us this time. And there we go. Here's our prompt here. And it's like, here's a step-by-step -step guide on how to do it actually. Uh, I imagine that if we did more steps in our DPO training process, it probably would have cut out this block here. But because we only did 20 steps, uh, it still has a little bit of fluff. But it says, oh, define your niche, create your channel. And it gives us a step-by-step -step plan on how to do that. So we're really done. Uh, today, what we did is we fine-tuned Llama 3's 8 billion parameter instruct model uh, using DPO. And we now have a new model that is based on the DPO data set that we chose. Uh, we only did 20 steps. So if you want to fine tune it for your particular use case, you could create your own DPO data set or use an existing one and probably add some more steps. But this is a way that you could fine tune the 8 billion parameter model directly from your laptop for only a couple dollars. If you are interested in more guides like this, I highly suggest checking out our notebooks tab on brev.dev. We have many different notebooks. I pr previously created a, uh, guide fine tuning the multimodal lava model which actually creates image or gets generates text from images highly suggest you check that out if you haven't already and if you have any questions leave them in the comments below and if you aren't already part of our discord please join that and also please subscribe and like the video because this is one way that we find a lot of our users and it's an area we're continuing to invest in so it would really mean a lot we put a lot of work into these uh this particular notebook and most of our notebooks were written by our very talented ml engineer ishan danani so as always thank you guys so much for watching subscribe for more content and we'll see you next time